Hello everybody, Dark Skeleton here, and in this video we're going to be reviewing more Angoro cards. So in the last day, they released one really cool Warlock card, I believe it's actually the new Legendary, that's not in Quest. And then four Elemental cards, so we're finally getting to see what Elementals actually mean to Hearthstone. And I think the mechanic is actually pretty interesting. It's a little different than what we've seen before, and hopefully it's playable so that, you know, Jay Golems don't just go ahead and stomp over everything still. So let's go ahead and get into today's five cards. So first up, and probably the most rage-inducing in some people, is going to be Clutch Mother Zavis. So this is a two-mana, two-two Warlock uh, Beast. Apparently it's a beast. I didn't even pay attention to that. Um, but the relevant part is that whenever you discard this, you give it plus two, plus two, and you return it to your hand. So what this means is if you're playing a Zoo Warlock that discards cards, which is looking more and more likely as they release more cards, um, then this card's going to be great, because not only uh, is it a mediocre minion, but it's a mediocre minion that becomes really good and you want to discard. So another good example of that uh, is the, uh, the, I think it's called like Clock, Silverware Golem? Yeah, Silverware Golem out of Karazhan. 3 mana, 3-3. Three, three. Super mediocre, right? Unless you discard it from your hand and you get to play it on the board for free um, just by soul, fire, soul firing or something. So soul fire becomes one mana deal, four damage, and instantly play your three mana minion. Uh, this is similar. Uh, it's a little less immediate onto the board, but as you build it up in your hand by discarding it over and over, uh, it's going to get buffed to a two mana 4-4 four four or a two mana 6-6, six six, and that's really cool. Um, on top of that, it not only does it get stronger as you discard it, but it, it's like a free discard, because you're not really discarding it. it. It's discarding becomes give the minion in your hand plus two plus two, and that's a huge difference. So discarding is usually a big drawback, and that's why Soulfire was, is one mana and used to even cost zero mana, because discarding a card sucks. It's like, well, now you have to make up for that, because you only have five cards in your hand to compete against their six. But what if you still have six cards, because you discarded a card, and you made it stronger? And that's where Clutch Mother's Abyss is going to be really good with Doomguard, really good with Soulfire, really, really good with Malkazar's Imp, because it still gets discarded, but it gets added back to your hand. So Malkazar's Imp is going to be like Soulfire, draw a card, and give your minion plus two, plus two. And it's just like, wait, what? That's so much synergy power. Uh, so yeah, uh, this card's going to be obviously really good in any discard Warlock. The problem that some people have been bitching about is that it's going to require you to basically play uh, discard Warlock. So in the same way that Jade Golems were in every Shaman deck, every Druid deck, and uh, I, I mean, didn't really pick up in Rogue quite as much, so Rogue's just kind of ignored it completely. But just in the same way that you have to build those Jade Golem decks, or else you're just not competitive, you're gonna probably have to play Discard Warlock at some uh, at some point. Because not only this card requires you to play a discard deck, but also the quest card, the Lakiri Sacrifice, requires you to play a discard deck. So the more discards you put in, the more better those cards are, and because these are the new power cards, probably you're gonna be seeing a lot of discard too, simply put. Uh, overall though, the card's pretty sweet. I like the concept of it. Um, I do think it's a little concerning that it pushes one class too far in one direction. It's like saying, okay, if you're a warlock, you have to play discard. If you're playing a J if you're playing druid, you have to play jade, unless you're playing Kun Cthune, but that's getting nerfed, so, eh, yeah. Uh, well, hopefully druids get some new uh, options going forward. So let's move on to the elementals. So, one mana, firefly, one, two... So this battle cry adds a 1-2 elemental to your hand, so it's not a second firefly, it's just a flat out 1-2 token elemental for 1 mana. So it's sort of like a uh, 2 mana summon 2 1-2s, which isn't too bad. You could also think of it as like delaying it by half, so it's like the turn 1 you get to play that, and maybe turn 2 you can pop the elemental plus another 1 drop on the field. If that's how you want to play the card. But the real purpose of this is actually the concept of just playing an elemental. Because as, as we'll see going forward with these cards, elementals um, are going to benefit from you having played an elemental in the previous turn. So if you played an elemental on the last turn, you get some effect this turn if you play another elemental card, one of the ones that have the synergy. So uh, with that going forward, let's move on to the third image. Uh, the third, well, yeah, image card, Flame Geyser. Deal 2 damage, a mage card, 
add a 1-2 elemental to your hand. So this is mage. The two classes that they said they want to focus on with elementals are mage and shaman because, I mean, those are the ones that use a lot of fire and ice and that kind of stuff. So it makes sense for those classes. Um, it's okay removal. I could say it's, it's, it does less than frostbolt, but freezing a minion versus adding a 1-2 elemental to your hand, it's, it's not too bad to get a 1-2 elemental. This is a reasonable removal card. You could kind of think of it like Jade Shuriken in a way. Like, but instead of getting a Jade Golem on the field, you are getting a 1-2 uh, Elemental in your hand. Not as good, but you don't have to combo it. Um, but, yeah, why do you want all these 1-2 Elementals in your hand? Once again, going back to that thing, which we'll see now, uh, being able to play a bunch of 1-mana one 1-2 one Elementals is going to power up your future Elementals. So, Stone Sentinel. This is a big guy for shamans, and hopefully elementals will be kind of a thing, so that it's not just Jade Shaman. Um, but I, I don't think this card will be powerful enough by itself. I, I'm really hoping that elementals are cool going forward, because Shaman was one of my favorite classes in World of Warcraft. So, 7 mana, 4-4, four, four, Elemental. Battle Cry, if you played an Elemental last turn, summon 2-3 two, two, Elementals with Taunt. Now... I'm guessing that what they mean by that is Spirit Wolves, but it could just be any other generic totem. I mean, what's kind of an elemental that is 2-3 and has taunt? Spirit Wolves, right? I mean, you even get two of them. So it's kind of like 7 mana, 4-4, four, four, plus 2, 2-3 two, taunts. And if you think of it like, oh, it's kind of like a Cenarius, that's not bad stats for 7 mana. If you add that up, that's uh, like an 8-10 for 7 mana. Spread across 3 minions, and I, I would argue it's better spread across 3 minions, especially with the taunts. So, in an elemental deck, it's a pretty solid late game uh, card. A little bit more defensive rather than offensive. Um, and it is weak to things like Flame Strength, that's true. Um, but you have to be playing those 1 2 elementals or something similar on the previous turn. So, you can't just, you know, kind of splice into this or splash into this. You have to be pretty dedicated to the elemental thing, I think. You could say, yeah, well, you just hold on to 1 2 elemental until you need to play a card like this. Um, there's actually a TCG called Shadowverse right now, where the mage deck in that, they have these things called Earth Rites, where you get an Earth Rite on the field, and then you consume those Earth Rites in order to play powerful uh, spells. Sort of like that, except you just have to have played it on a previous turn, and it doesn't exactly consume the elemental, but it requires that power source. Uh, overall, in terms of power, I think this is an okay, uh, okay card. If you're playing a really heavy uh, elemental shaman, then you're probably going to be playing this, especially if it's kind of late game. Uh, very comparable to the, uh, what's it called, the Jade Champion, the 7 mana, 5-5, five, five, summon a Jade with Taunt, Jade Golem that is. Where it's, it, it, it's good in those mid-range slash control decks, but it's not quick enough for aggro, so you can play this, but it's got to be a mid-range deck or a control deck. And I do like control shaman. Okay, so next up, and this is the big guy. Uh, th this guy, you can look at it and you can really imagine its potential. So, 9 mana, Osric, 5-5, five, five, Elemental, with Taunt, and it gains plus 5 health for each Elemental you played last turn. Which means, if you played 6, 1-2 one, uh, one, uh, of those little fire guys, uh, the, 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 the Fireflies, or the Elementals they give off of that, then you just made a 9 mana 535 taunt, which is immediately going to get axed. Uh, unfortunately, it's not quite the same as, uh, uh, what's his name, Slogoth the Slitherer with 35 health. Oh man, if it was untargetable by spells, it would just be like, uh, play a bunch of elementals, you win the game. Um, well, then they twisting Nether, but hey. So, you can make a really big guy. In most cases, you're going to have, like, one or two elementals to play on the previous turn, unless you were really planning it out throughout your game. And maybe you do plan, like, planning ahead. When do you want to play those weak guys to power your next turn? That's where I think this elemental concept becomes really interesting. So, you play two weak elementals or two moderate elementals on turn eight. You lead into a turn nine, where you get a 515 taunt, which is just huge, bulky. If your opponent doesn't have an answer for it, like a polymorph or a deadly shot or something like that, they're just, they're going to have a bad time. I mean, going through a big taunt like that, it's like an Ancient of War, but bigger. Now, in a worst case scenario, it's probably, you're still playing an Elemental deck, but you only play one the previous turn, and then it's a 9 mana 5, 10 taunt, which is decent. I, I think that's kind of where, the, where they're saying is like, the if this card was going to be average power level, where should it be? 5 mana, uh, I mean, 9 mana 5, 10 taunt, it's sort of like uh, Shogoth the Sliver, 
but one less, uh, one more HP, but without the, um, without the immune to spells thing, which definitely, sh uh, Shogla, whatever his name is, the, the, the Slitherer, would be better in that case. So, for this card to be good, you need to play two elementals on the previous turn, which means you have to be super heavily invested into an elemental deck, but if you're playing an elemental control deck, like, let's say, Control Elemental Shaman, eh? Uh, I would say you are going to be playing this guy. It, it just fits too well. Why wouldn't you want to play a 915 taunt? Um, I, I could see a case where you just say it's too slow. Because there are a lot of powerful 9 mana cards. Nefarian, you get an 8-8 eight, eight and you draw 2 cards. But was that played much? Not so much. Ysera, it's a 4-12. I have a golden one. It's one of my favorite cards. It's usually too slow, especially in the current meta. meta. And that's a 412 that gets you basically infinite card value. So is a 515 with taunt good enough? I mean, you're not getting those extra crazy cards like the dream cards? Eh, well, you know, it might not make the cut on second thought. Like a 515 9 mana taunt is pretty good, but it's also removal bait. And uh, good players are going to save their removal because they know you're going to be playing this card if it's really in the metal. Uh, I mean, it would be obvious. It's like you're playing this elemental shaman deck. And it's like, oh, he's playing Stone Sentinel, so he's obviously control. I wonder if he has Osrook in his deck. Wow, I didn't see that coming. Okay, Siphon Soul, Last Crystal Potion, Shadow War of Death. Whoa. And, and not only did you pay 9 mana for it, but you burned all of your weak elementals to charge this guy up on the previous turn, and then you just get wrecked. Mm. It's playable. Maybe it's 2 or 3 stars out of 5. It's not a meta-defining card, though. Um, as insane as this guy's health can get, uh, Agro will have either surrendered by turn 9 or the control decks are just going to save something to deal with this, but it guaranteed does need to be dealt with somehow. Because you can't just plow through a 515 taunt, that, that won't work. So it's either you remove this, you kill them before they play this card, or you lose the game because it's a freaking huge minion. So uh, that's going to be it for today. I'm really glad that we're getting to see some of those elemental cards come out. And uh, next, we've got to see uh, hopefully more of the dinosaurs, more of the flora. Are there going to be more cards like the corpse flower where uh, it comes back to life, a dormant minion that hits the board? Because um, I like that concept. Anything that's kind of new and fresh to the game and not totally forced on you like Jade Golems was is something I'm going to be interested in. So I've been Dark Skeleton. Hope you guys enjoyed taking a look at these five new cards from uh, Journey to Angoro. And hopefully in the next day or two, I'll be out with some more card reviews. So until then, guys, I will catch you then.